last strawberry in the universe. So Crichton has created a machine that can take an object and create two clones of it. You'll be famous. They'll build your statues. They'll even name towns after you. Dorksville springs instantly to mind. Strawberry's incredible. So succulent. But it turns out that one of the clones has all the best elements of the original and the other has the worst. Funny kind of Ridley texture. So Lister tries to reverse the process to see what would happen. Nice typing there, very convincing. Anyway, something has gone wrong and Red Dwarf is going to explode in 15 minutes. They escape on Starbug and... Guess what chances of it blowing at about one in... There it goes. One. And things aren't looking too good on Starbug either. The nearest asteroid with an S3 atmosphere is six hours away. The trouble is we only have enough fuel for five hours flight. We only have enough oxygen for seven minutes. True to form, Rimmer is wondering if the weight reduction after ejecting Lister and Cat will help them get to their destination before Starbug runs out of fuel. By the way, I just want to point out that this is only two episodes after Rimmer was captured and they all came to his rescue because he's part of the crew. That's Rimmer for you. He never learns a damn thing. The boys from the Dwarf! If one of us is in a fix, the homeboys band together! It's the way it is! But then Crichton points out that Rimmer is running on backup, which is only going to last four minutes. Okay, homeboys, let's posse! As if Rimmer wasn't loathsome enough, now he's acting like a chav. So Crichton has found two objects that were created just before Red Dwarf exploded, which turn out to be two clones of Red Dwarf. Apparently, instead of reversing the process of the triplicator, he reversed the field, so basically Red Dwarf and everything on it, except for the strawberry, was cloned twice. One succulent and divine, the other... Fish bait. In the lab, the triplicated copies had a limited lifespan. About an hour. Crichton thinks that the high Red Dwarf should have a working triplicator on it, so if he can throw the process in reverse, it should merge those two copies and recreate the original Red Dwarf. He makes it sound so simple! I know, right? So Crichton and Rimmer stay behind so Rimmer can get a recharge as Lister and Cat board the high Red Dwarf. And of course it's immaculate, down to the air. Makes you feel good to be alive. <laughs> Lister wants to try the food, and I love that the control panel is just a computer keyboard they stuck on the wall. What did you order? Ultimate test? Pot noodle? Keep in mind that Lister chose dog food over pot noodle and marooned. <laughs> Jeez, cat, do you need a moment alone? I've been to a parallel universe, I've seen time running backwards, I've played pool with planets, and I've given birth to twins. But I never thought in my entire life I'd taste an edible pot noodle. And then they meet a couple members of the crew. And here's another cat line I love. I find clothes a distraction from the pursuit of spiritual and intellectual fulfillment. I find spiritual and intellectual fulfillment a distraction from the pursuit of clothes. So the High Red Dwarf crew are basically monks who ponder the meaning of life and such. Naturally, our main crew is bored with it all. Unfortunately, it turns out that the High version of the Triplicator is missing some of the necessary parts that ended up on the low ship. Not sure if that makes sense. If that's how it works, how was the rest of the ship able to function? Oh well. But first, the entertainment. Brother Rimmer is portraying Agony. <laughs> Brother Rimmer gets Best Face Award, as always. And Agony, in torment, searches forever in vain. Anyway, it's interrupted by a distress call from the low ship, so all eight of them go there. I love how they split up in such a way that the staff doesn't have to deal with split screen. So the low ship is about what you would expect. It's dark and dingy, and we can already tell that the crew isn't very nice. He's accidentally shot me five times. Oh, how I love him! A grievous fault with thine weapon. It keepeth shooting people. You see? There it goes again. I thought the high crew was supposed to be intelligent. I guess it's all book smarts, which kind of makes sense. They're so pure they can't imagine anyone being bad. Anyway, while running away from the bomb, Rimmer and Lister get separated and Lister runs into the low crew. Low Lister is completely disgusting. Low Cat seems to be de-evolved and animalistic. No one thought it'd be a good idea to refilm that after the fake teeth came out, really? Low Crichton seems barely able to function. So, how much worse do you think Rimmer is going to be? Hello, my pretty. <laughs> well, he's basically a Rocky Horror reject. I'm going to lash you to within an inch of your life, and then I'm going to have you. And kind of rapey. Not where I would have expected them to go with that, but okay. 
<laughs> it sucks to be Lister right now. Anyway, they take control of Lister's body using some kind of device that sticks into his spinal cord. <laughs> Low Lister's laugh makes me cringe. It's not creepy so much as it has a nails on a chalkboard effect on me. <laughs> also, I can't help but notice that Low Holly, along with having a static e monitor, is looking like Susie Sue. There's no mention of that in the Making of documentary, but I think Susie was huge in the UK at the time, so I gotta believe that it was intentional. Like, someone in the makeup department had to have been a fan. <laughs> He applauds our efforts. Anyway, they make Lister do messed up things like slam his nose in a cabinet door, pour boiling water on his crotch, and force him to e eat a tarantula. And if you want to see that, you're going to have to find it on your own. I know it's not real, but nope, all of my nope. Anyway, they put tape over his mouth and send him to kill everyone. Meanwhile, Crichton and Cat find the triplicator with eight minutes to spare. Have I told today how much I love thee, brother? Thy love refreshes and cleanses me like a babbling mountain stream, brother. This must be what inspires all that Rimmer x Lister fanfiction. Anyway, Lister shows up, stabs High Lister, and crushes Rimmer's light bee. Farewell, brother. My brook is babbled. I found Goalpost Head. No sign of Dormouse Cheeks, though. Goalpost Head and Dormouse Cheeks. Anyway, the other three have regrouped, but they haven't found Lister. But here he comes. Fortunately, Cat sees that he's trying to say something, so he removes the tape, so Lister is able to warn them. You gotta stop me! Incapacitate me in a painless way! Cat's all done. That was unnecessary. Would you rather have killed him, dumbass? Duck! Left! Anyway, Crichton knocks out Lister by surprising him with chloroform. Surprise me now! Here comes my surprise, sir! I guess he really only needed a surprise to Lowe's, but that's a great bit. As they're trying to get away, Lister attacks again, but Crichton finds the spinal implant and removes it. But then it ends up in Cat for a minute. So the ships rejoin, and they're about to head back to Red Dwarf when Lister sits on the implant and it's revealed that Low Lister was a stowaway. As Cat hears him and takes him out with a bazookoid, that was badass. I better, I better remove the spinal implant and destroy it once and for all. Just give me one week, that's all I ask. <laughs> Boy, this is gonna be fun. And so ends Demons and Angels. This is another one of those episodes that isn't especially deep, but it is spot on with the comedy. And while everyone is great, Rimmer and Cat, who happen to be my favorites, kind of steal the show. The only possible complaint I have is that the highs are kind of boring and don't stand out from each other. I suspect that's probably the point. To be too perfect is boring, and I think that's what the writers were going for in a rule of funny sort of way. But with how interesting and unique from each other the lows were, it might have been interesting if the highs were given the same level of attention. Oh well, still a great episode. Next up is the season 5 finale, Back to Reality. See you then. Electrical fire has knocked out my voice recognition unicycle. Abandoned shop. This is not a daffodil. Well, thankfully, Holly's unaffected. <laughs>